All right, so there's a leaf blower, lawnmower outside. They are replacing my roof. There's a giant dumpster full of old roof tiles outside and uh, people are literally walking around above me. So this is gonna be maybe a background noise filled video. So enjoy. Today, we are going to learn how to find perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. So let's begin with a review of what area and perimeter even are. So area and perimeter are topics that you probably learned in IM. We've talked about them a little bit in algebra and also in geometry already this year. So area is the square units that take up space inside a figure and the perimeter is the distance around that figure. In the coordinate plane, we begin using some tools such as the distance formula to find the perimeter. So here's our distance formula. It compares the horizontal change, so the change in our x's, to the vertical change, change which is the change in our y values. This is very strongly related to the Pythagorean theorem. So if you had two points and you wanted to find the distance between them on a coordinate grid, you could always draw in a right triangle. And then if you find the change in X and the change in Y, there's a car alarm going off outside. Cool. Um, the distance between the two points really is like doing A squared <clears throat> plus B squared equals C squared. So we're going to apply this to some points, lines, figures on the coordinate plane. So let's say on a coordinate plane, you had some lines. If you had a line like this, which is a vertical line, instead of trying to apply the distance formula, the best approach to take is just to count it. So we begin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is eight units long. Just count it out. Same thing if you had a horizontal line, you're going to count those. One, two, three, four, four units. That's it. So the distance formula is only meant to be used when you have like a diagonal line here, um, which is where you would apply the distance formula. So let's say that you had two points in the coordinate plane and you need to find the distance. So let's just practice finding the distance between those two points. So our distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So looking at these two points, the first thing you'd want to do is write down your points and identify which ones are x1, y1 and x2, y2. So our first point, it actually really doesn't matter which one's which, this will work regardless of which one you pick is x1, y1. The second point is x2, y2, meaning first x, first y, second x, second y. And I've color coded this to show where I'm gonna plug them in. So x2 minus x1, that's six minus negative two, which is gonna become six plus two, and then negative three minus one. So six minus negative two is eight, because it's really six plus two, and negative three minus one is negative four. So this is like our um, a squared and b squared to find our c squared. So you square them, you add them up, and you take the square root. So the distance is about the square root of 80, which if you simplify that, that's four root five or approximately 8.9 units. So our final answer, you could leave it as a simplified radical, four root five, or if your teacher was asking you to approximate, you could do it as 8.9 units. So this distance right here is about 8.9 units long. The other way to think about this is using the Pythagorean theorem. So that vertical distance, that's the distance of four. That's where that four was in our equation. And our horizontal distance, that's a distance of eight. So the eight squared plus four squared equals C squared. You could think about it just like the Pythagorean theorem instead of thinking about it as the distance formula and you'll get the right answer either way. So now we are going to go into some problems that are located on your capture sheet. The capture sheet is linked in the description box below. You are going to be prompted to make a copy and you can either follow along and just type into the document 
or you can print it out if you prefer, but either way, you probably will want a capture sheet so that you can follow along for the next several slides. So the first thing we're going to do is determine the perimeter of triangle ABC. So the first thing that we need to find is the location of those three points. Point A is at negative 5, negative 3. C is at 5, negative 3, and B is at 3, 3. So knowing that location will help us a lot. The perimeter is simply the distance around the shape, so we need to find the length of the three line segments. Let's start with the length of line segment AB. So AB has endpoints negative 5, negative 3, and 3, positive 3. So when I plug those into the distance formula, just like we did in the last slide, and I begin simplifying, I have 8 squared plus 6 squared, which is the square root of 64 plus 36, which is the square root of 100. So the distance AB is 10 units long. You can pause this video at any point to write this down if you need to. What I'm showing here with these arrows is that you could think about this as a vertical distance, which is the 6, and a horizontal distance, which is the 8. If you prefer, you can kind of box that out and count it up instead of putting it all into the distance formula. We're actually going to do an entire example where we take a Pythagorean theorem approach instead. If you want to stay tuned, we'll do that again in later um, examples. Now we're going to find the length of BC using the same method. So it has endpoints at 3, 3 and 5, negative 3. Plugging those into our distance formula and simplifying, we get 2 squared plus negative 6 squared, which is 4 plus 36. So the square root of 40. So this radical, um, you could simplify the radical or you could do an approximation. Uh, so simplified, it's 2 root 10, which is approximately 6.3 units. Since we're going to find the perimeter, you probably do want to use a decimal approximation because at the end when you add them all up, we want to have like an idea of how big this shape is. So here I'm showing again, you could take a Pythagorean theorem approach if you prefer. So the length of AC, we are not going to use the distance formula because it is simply straight across. So for the length of AC, we're just going to count. It's 10 units across. So the question was, what's the perimeter of triangle ABC? So we'll take the pieces of each. So AB was 10 units, BC was 6.3 units, and AC was 10 units. When you add those up, you get a total of 26.3 total units for the perimeter of triangle ABC. You can pause here if you missed anything to write it down. Otherwise, we're going to jump into finding the area of triangle ABC. So the area of a triangle is one half base times height. And AC is our base. So we already know that the length of AC is 10 units long. We counted it out because it's a horizontal line. And then we're interested in the perpendicular height. So if you come straight down from point B, making a perpendicular line, meeting your base like this, that length is six units long. Since it's vertical, you can just count that out as well. So now we just do one half 10 times six, which is half of 60, which is 30 square units. So the area of triangle ABC, the area that fills in this triangle is 30 square units. Now, this strategy that we just used isn't the only strategy that we could use. In the second strategy you see here, what we do is we build a rectangle around the outside of it so that we can find the area of that rectangle, then subtract the right triangles that are located outside. We're going to use this method for another triangle later that doesn't have any horizontal or vertical sides. Strategy three would be to split the triangle up into smaller polygons inside and add those up. We'll also take that approach in a later example. So here is a second example. This is the second example on your capture sheet. And what you'll notice is that it's a little more challenging because all of these sides are diagonal. So we will need to use either the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem for each. So first, we're going to determine the perimeter of triangle GHJ. And instead of taking the approach I took last time, which is just simply using the distance formula, 
This time I'm going to build right triangles around the outside so that I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of all the sides. So my first triangle is built here. You go straight up and out to connect G and H. Basically it's like a slope triangle if you're used to doing that from algebra. Connecting G and J, I made a right triangle there for that side. And I made another right triangle for the side HJ. So what you want to do to begin is just count along each horizontal and vertical distance. So if you've set this up on your paper, if you have it printed, right now what you would do is start counting those and mark up your paper. Remember, it's probably a good idea to pause this video throughout so that you can make annotations yourself as opposed to just listening to all of this and then having to fill in your paper at the end. So these sides, side lengths are 8, 2, 11, 3, 5, and 13. So once you have all of your horizontal and vertical distances, you've done the first step. Now we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem in each triangle to find the distance that is diagonal. So take a moment, pause the video, and find all those diagonal distances using the Pythagorean theorem on your own sheet. What you should have found is that the length of GH is approximately 13.9, that's the square root of 194. HJ is the square root of 68, which is approximately 8.2, and JG is the square root of 130, which is approximately 11.4. So the total when you add up your perimeter is 33.576 units. And notice these are regular units, they're not units squared because it is a distance, not an area. Speaking of area, we do also want to find the area of this figure. And finding the area here is not as simple as last time because we don't have a horizontal and vertical base and height. So we're going to take the second approach that I showed you, which is like some people call it the box method. But when I hear box method, I think about like multiplying binomials and algebra. Um, but you do build a box. So you build a rectangle on the outside of your triangle. Um, and we're going to follow the same steps. So. Let's go, let's get into this. I don't know what I'm saying. I haven't taught in a long time. <laughs> so we're gonna count along each horizontal and vertical distance, just like we did before. And now we're going to calculate the area of that outer rectangle. So that large teal rectangle that's holding your triangle in, find the area of that. So the long side is 13 and the short side is eight. So our rectangle has an area of 104 units. Now we're going to find the area of the three triangles on the outside and subtract them so that we can know the area of the triangle on the inside. So the right triangles, you have a base and a height since they're meeting at a right angle, so it's pretty easy to find their area. So this is 13 times five divided by two, which is 32 and a half. For this triangle here, it's 11 times three divided by two, which is 16 and a half. And then for the last triangle, eight times two divided by two, which just gets us back to eight. So we have the area of the whole rectangle and now we have the area of the right triangles. Now we're going to subtract the area of the right triangles from the area of the rectangle. <clears throat> so the area of triangle GHJ is the leftover, which is 47 square units. We have one last example on your capture sheet. It's on the third page and it's finding the perimeter and area of a quadrilateral. So moving on to this next example, here we have a quadrilateral. And I should have changed that. I don't know why it says determine the perimeter of triangle GHJ. I mean, I know, I know why it says that. It was from the last slide. I should have changed it. We're trying to find the perimeter of shape A, B, C, D. Sorry, I'm not gonna fix it at this point. <laughs> So this is our third strategy here. Instead of putting a box around it, which would work, um, we're instead going to split up this figure into smaller figures that we can work with that have right angles in them. So I'm going to split this into right triangles using vertical and horizontal lines coming out of the vertices, which looks like this. So I split it in half here, and then I come out from A and I make a horizontal line there. And then from C, I make another horizontal line there. So now I have split my shape up into four right triangles. Now I am going to find the lengths of all of the pieces. So um, that longer side there, those are both eight. 
these little guys are four and five, four and five again on the inside. So I really only have two different triangles like mirrored onto the other side. So now we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem in our right triangles to find the diagonal distances. So starting like with AB, I would do four squared plus five squared equals C squared for AB. For BC, four squared plus eight squared equals BC squared. Uh, for CD, four squared plus five squared equals CD squared. And for AD, four squared plus eight squared equals AD squared. Although you don't really have to do it four times because like they're the same triangles. So you should just be able to do it twice. So what you should find is that the length of AB is the square root of 41, the length of BC is the square root of 80, and then it repeats for CD and DA. So the perimeter is adding all of those up and you do want a decimal approximation here. It still says triangle GHJ, oh, bummer. Okay, the perimeter of quadrilateral ABCD is 30.695 units. It's probably gonna say triangle in the next slide too. It does. So now we wanna find the area of the shape that's not a triangle. It's definitely a quadrilateral ABCD. To begin, we're going to add the area of the right triangles. I mean, actually that's the whole thing. You just find the area of each of the triangles and then you add them up. So our first triangle here, uh, base times height, four times five is 20, divide it by two, this has an area of 10. And it's the same as this triangle down here that has an area of 10, and this is in square units. And then for the other one, they are four by eight. So four times eight divided by two gives me 16 and 16. So the area of not triangle GHJ, definitely a quadrilateral ABCD. When you add it all up, 10 plus 16 plus 10 plus 16, you get 52 square units. All right, so we have seen lots of different strategies, including using the distance formula, building right angles on the outside, building right triangles on the inside, and that pretty much covers it for perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.